Hello, dear aquarist, dear discus lover. Today I have for you something about the discus. Look, I have a nice t-shirt, which is a nice, beautiful discus. But today I will show you not so nice discus. Yes, discus can become sick. And you know it, when you keep discus, that we can encounter diseases. So I will talk to you about, in those 10, 12 minutes, about some important diseases of discus you can encounter when keeping the fish. So I hope this video will help you and watch till the end because they're going to be important diseases which teaches you lessons, how to take care, how to prevent, how to control and how to treat because you want to keep your fish in the best shape and you want to keep them alive. So uh, let me share my PowerPoint for you and today it's about uh, the important discus diseases. You can select the subtitles in your language. You can see French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, anything you can check. Please do that. And then you will see, we will talk about the diseases in the wild and the tank race discus, gill flukes, number one, secondary bacterial gill rot, spironucleus, used to be called hexamita, internal parasites, hole in the head syndrome. Yes, I will talk about that, about the head and lateral line erosion fish tuberculosis, mycobacterium, the bacterial infection, and internal worm infections, nematodes, capillaria. Well, many details you can get in my book about discus. Yes, this big book has a lot of photographs about discus. Here you see a few explaining with photographs how disease discus can look like and what the disease is, or what you can do about, and the treatments, big chapters you can get. Well, here is one of the discus here, this Marlboro one. You can see it's respiration in the gill is not normal. It's heavy breathing and it's separating here. Um, he was getting slowly skinny. You can see it's getting a little bit skinny already. And the other ones might look OK, but I tell you, they might have also some worms, but not so bad yet. So you, it's the time now to act, to take action and to make sure you can start controlling because if you do it act too late look at this one also starting to show it you have to start as soon as possible otherwise it's getting too late and you, then you get these dark wasting away discus look how weak they are they're separating from the group and of certainly certainly the other ones will also have some gill flukes but that's the time you have to act and you can do that by taking samples from the gill tissue or scrapings and then you will see those gill flukes it's easy to watch at a 50 100 magnification with a simple microscope and gill flukes can damage the fish look this fish looks so badly damaged after a couple of weeks or maybe months with gill flukes and then eventually he will die you can see here at the right then he dies and look at the gills all rotten away and then the fish will suffocate. He cannot take up oxygen and he will die. What can you do as a treatment? Well, check for the first signs. Try making a scraping from the gills and observe in the microscope. Avoid overcrowding and poor conditions. Treat with medication. Also treat the filter because there can be baby flukes there. Many good medications you can get in the pet shop and think about the cycle. It can take up to 14 days with the eggs that those worms produce eggs and reinfect the other fish in the tank. Follow the directions to repeat the treatment and be aware of secondary bacterial infections. Do not treat preventative monthly. That doesn't bring. It could only bring resistant worms. Only treat for disease. When there are symptoms for disease, then you check. If you treat every month, you're going to create other serious problems. I can also recommend to feed with Dr. Basley Beiser's food garlic. That helps in the care when the fish have gill flukes. Number two, spironucleus used to be called hexamita. You can see these dark discus here at the bottom, slowly wasting away. It can take months. The other ones, well, some are maybe clamping the fins and might look okay but they all might have that parasite and that parasite is inside the fish causing excessive mucus see it hanging out as a string from that discus 
because their discus was suffering from hexameter, spironucleus. So check the excrements. And then you can see this, these parasites, those thousands of little animals here in the intestine, in the gut, causing damage to the gut, causing damage to the gut so the gut is not functioning well and the microbiome is bad. So the gut flora is bad and the fish cannot take good up its nutrients and minerals and he will waste away. And then he gets damaged, okay, he gets lesions, he gets weak, it starts to get little holes like you see here. I'll talk about it later on, about the head and lateral line syndrome or the holes in the head that can appear later on. Well, as a treatment, what can you do? First of all, improve the conditions. Try to avoid frozen or alive food. Avoid stress. Try to treat with an appropriate medication like metronidazole or some similar products which are available in the pet shop. Use a functional food, Dr. Basley or Biofish Food Lapacho, which helps in the fight of the parasite together with the medication and it helps in the repair. Sometimes antibacterial treatment is necessary when there is advanced infections, also when a hole in the head appears. Talk about later on, watch further on about hole in the head. And I do not recommend to treat monthly with metronidazole or similar product against spironucleus. It doesn't bring anything. It just brings you more serious uh, adverse events, uh, effects. You're going to have other problems. You're going to have resistance. Fish don't react well to the medicine and you create unhealthy situations. Don't do that. So number three, hole in the head, head and lateral line syndrome. Yes, you can see the holes here appearing. It starts with very few holes here at the mouth, at the head. And that's where it starts. That's what you have to see. That's why you have to watch your fish daily. And I call it a syndrome because I explain at the end, it's not a disease because the disease is related to a particular pathogen. But here it's a mix of origins, a mix of problems. I explain that later on, watch. When you see it, you can see it coating further in this head and lateral line, more holes appear, the fish get more skinny. And you see here the bigger holes here at the head region and here the lateral line getting eroded here more holes in the lateral line which is also here around the head he also starts to get fin and tail rot that's the next thing that starts already and in more advanced you see the big holes appear well it's because you've seen it too late that's an advanced and that's going to give scar tissue you will hardly have a chance to repair that completely but still, you can treat and save the fish and do it when you see the first signs to avoid scars and lesions. One fish with holes, but all the other fish also are maybe sick. You have to be aware of that. Check the conditions of food and water. Check the slimy excrements, use the microscope. You might see the spironucleus parasites or maybe also protopalina. I have that in other videos. Usually it's a mix of causes, parasites, bacteria, bad food, over-medicating, yes, over-medicating or using antibiotics can give a risk of that problem because the gut flora is damaged, a shortage of minerals, permanent carbon filtration. Well, you need a good examination to determine the treatment. Repair of the immune system, the gut microbiome is very important. And you need good nutrients from a functional food like or like or Dr. Baslier, Baishu food Lapacho. That helps in the fish in the repair and the fight of the parasites. I have a lot of explanations about hole in the head in my book on fish diseases. Fish tuberculosis, number four, a bacteria, mycobacterium. You see the skinny fish, darkening fish, wasting away, getting very skinny. After many months, he slowly dies. It takes a long time before the fish dies. And you should watch for the symptoms. There can be many different symptoms, and particularly it's the darkening, losing of the color. Sometimes it's a big belly, but very rare. It's usually a skinny fish and slowly wasting away, dark, sitting in the edges, not eating well. Uh, check the organs that you can do when the fish died. Well, we can see badly damaged organs that you can only observe when the fish is dead, but then you can check for the other fish. That fish gives you a lesson. 
what kind of actions you have to take about the other fish in the aquarium. And the origin is fish food. Yes, it comes you quite often from live or frozen fish food like mosquito larvae. The mother fish passes it on through the gonads to the babies, to the eggs. Uh, mostly uh, it's caused by breeders who don't take care. They don't have a good biosecure system. The treatment, well, separate the fish, put it to sleep. Prevention is better than cure. He can recommend treating with a food, well, treating, caring about the fish with a food like Dr. Baslier, Baiser Food Fuco. And many more advice I have in my book. So read my books to get advice what to do in this case. Number five, last but not least, internal worm infections caused by the nematode capillaria, which is in the gut, the intestine. And the fish is getting skinny, acting very strange, still being hungry, but acting very strange behavior, very abnormal swimming, separating from the group. And you can check that. You can check and find those eggs in the excrements. So collect the excrements. That can be interesting, not only to find the capillaria worms, but also maybe the spironucleus parasites, like explained in disease, uh, important disease number one. So things to check in the excrements can be very helpful. The eggs are a risk for spreading. Check the quality of the live food because it can be introduced by live food or like tuberfex. Medications are prasicantel, levamizol. Uh, treatment should be repeated in two weeks time. I explained that a lot in my books with all the dosages explained about six, seven different drugs I propose there. And try to feed with a Dr. Baslier biofish food, garlic or pumpkin seed extract. That helps in this kind of infections. So as you said, as I said, microscope is important because our eyes are limited. Get more details for treatments and get more details about diseases in my big book. So I thank you for watching and try to like this video and subscribe to see more videos on diseases about cases of diseased discus. See my cases. I will talk about in the future about the important, important diseases of angelfish or scalare, the dwarf cichlids, Oscars, Malawi cichlids, Tanganyika cichlids, betas, guppies, gillies, rainbow fish, and many more. So I hope you like this one, particularly the discus lover should watch it certainly. It gives you lessons, what can occur, what you can do and how to treat. Subscribe to learn more. Thank you for watching. So you will be or become a better fish hobbyist. Bye bye.